Now the purpose of this video isn't to teach you how to do this, it's to kind of get you started and give you the ideas, and I'm showing you how I do it, uh, put this display up at least. And the two boards that are on the table are Adrenos, and Adrenos are microcontrollers, they allow you to simply program the pin outputs. They do a lot more, but we're just programming the pin outputs with highs and lows based on time, and uh, we're controlling the relay with it. Um, this one is an Uno, it's smaller than a Mega. The Mega has more pin layouts, but essentially they are the same board. I was originally going to fire it up with this particular Mega because this is what's running my display outside the yard or another version of this, but this board doesn't power on, it's actually bad. Uh, that's the first one I've had fail, so you know, go figure. But I did have one of these Unos that I programmed pin 9 to uh, pause every half of a second. And as you can see, it's pretty simple. There's a ground wire over here, and pin 9 is right there. And I have it powering a solid state relay. Now, solid state relays are pretty cool because there's no mechanics in them to fail. They're, I, I believe they're a triac and an optocoupler uh, combined. If I'm wrong, put that down below. But essentially, a very small amount of current and voltage can trigger a very large amount of current and voltage on the other side. Um, which is awesome because this Adreno can only put out 5 volts. You would never turn on a 120 volt light bulb with that. But you can turn this relay on and then you can complete the circuit flow to turn this light on. So essentially we broke one path, we broke the hot wire that's going to the light bulb and every time this relay is turned on it connects that path and you get a flashing light bulb. Now for the train display itself we're using six relays two of them for the wheels because we want them to flash at a different sequence. I originally was going to use three. Uh, three different sequences of lights give you a direction of motion. Two flashing back and forth just indicate motion, uh, but I was kind of in a hurry and I needed more lights and I just put two on there for this year. We'll probably change it next year. So we only have two strings of lights on each wheel that are oscillating back and forth, which gives you an indication of motion. And then the rest of the train that's animated is a smokestack. It's four different sections of smoke and there's a, a bar on the wheels that you know goes around with it. We'll show you that in a second. And it's also four different sections. And so those will be tied in with the smokestack and they will consecutively work. And you'll see that. You'll understand when I show you the train itself. You get what I'm saying. But basically we need six relays. And we're going to drive all six relays with this board. And we'll do a little bit of coding. And I'll show you some of that code. It's really simple. You basically set up your pins. And uh, we're, we made these pins all an output. And then you set up a quick loop, and if you follow the loop down, it's basically going to, you know, ride a couple of pins high. It's going to wait uh, half a second, and then it's going to, you know, change some pins. And it goes all the way down through this loop, which is kicking all those relays, and uh, then it goes back to the top. It just keeps repeating it. That's why it's called a loop. Uh, it's really simple to program. It's not much to it. There's other ways to do it. This was just kind of a quick and dirty way to pull it off. Now I have all those components in a watertight case. This is actually a Harbor Freight case. They have some pretty cool pretty cool cases. They, they're relatively inexpensive when they're on sale, but they are watertight. They have a gasket that goes all the way around it. They even have a little vent that you can open up in the front. Now this is sitting on a porch that doesn't get a lot of weather. And this is, really isn't watertight anymore because I have a couple of holes in the end of it the cable's going through. But again, it sits on a porch that doesn't see the weather. Inside the box you can see I have the uh, solid state relays double sticky tape to the bottom. Uh, you know, these can handle 40 amps and we are sending very little current through them with the LEDs. They don't even get warm to the touch. So in this case, just doing a double sticky tape on the bottom works okay. Uh, and then the Adreno board is just laying in a little cutout box that I had. I think there were some rivets in that box and I sticky taped it down. So it's all kind of laying in there loose. I have them zip tied just a, you know, a little bit here and there to keep things from moving, but it sits on the porch and it really doesn't get bothered. That is just a, uh, a 5 volt phone adapter, a charger, and that's what the Adreno runs on, it's 5 volts, and we're good to go. That's pretty much how this works. Uh, everything is running through a 14 gauge trailer wire, it's 7, you know, 7 wires in there, and uh, 14 gauge is overkill for, you know, the little bit of current that we're running through, so that worked out pretty well too. And this is what the train looks like this year. Now sadly I didn't get the middle car done, I just didn't have enough time this year, but I will get it done next year. and. Hopefully this gives you an idea of how these are built, or at least how simply they can be built. So hopefully that answered some of your questions about how at least I build these things and put them in the yard. If you like these types of videos, please like and subscribe. Take a look at some of my other videos. At the very least, you might be entertained.